Well, it's great to be here with my sister, Letitia. Sister, not wife. That's right. It's, we just wanted to clarify that. So we thought we'd have a chat. Uh, we're at Racecourse Road. Mm. Um, you're on the way to the airport. I am. And um, we're just having a wine together. Cheers, Tish. Well, I was much older than me too. Well, I've had a harder <laughs> life. But um, for those of you who follow both of us on social media, um, part of the reason for this chat is just to clear up a couple of things because you will have seen that Tish is often quite mean to me on social media. <laughs> right, yeah. So I've had to have counselling. This is where we yeah. are going to reconcile, you know, on social media, on publicly for all of you. Anyway, enough of that. Um, I'm really glad that Tish is here today. Um, I really respect her uh, in spite of all the nasty things she says to me. But she's been the CEO of an amazing organisation called City Women for many years now. She's been involved in trying to help young girls for well over 20 years. And we want to have a chat today because uh, she's speaking all over the country and the world about uh, issues which um, probably a lot of people don't really want to talk about, hey Tish? No, not, not overly. <laughs> And uh, so you're the CEO of City Women. Tell us a little bit about City Women and how it came about and what you're doing. Yep. City Women, City Women is an umbrella organisation for around 15... You can look at me. You can oh, always, well, or you I can prefer look at to talk well. to the people, actually. <laughs> um, but yes, you're looking good too. Thank you. Uh, it's an umbrella organisation for 15 different um, ministries, we'd call, that are helping women and girls in our mm. city. So some of the things we do are programs in the schools, um, we run a pregnancy support centre, we work with refugees, yep. we reach out to the sex workers, so there's a whole range. Yep. And Good, and, and we're going to cover some of these yep. issues in the talk. Um, you uh, got into this because you started, well, well you had a challenge from um, the Mayor of Toowoomba, mm. Di Thorley, who, yep. who I had the privilege yes. of serving under for yes. about uh, six years. Tell us about that. I think she'll regret the day she <laughs> challenged us. She um, might. <laughs> But she spoke to a group of Christian women and said, your ladies are doing great things in your churches, but why don't you get outside and do something for the young people of our mm. city? She had a passion for the young people, as you remember. Yep. And we took that on board and we thought, well, let's just run a camp up to the Bunya Mountains and take away some girls. And uh, that's what started all of this. And, and so, so what were those girls telling you on that camp yeah. that um, spurred you into doing the things that you're doing today? Yeah, look, I was shocked. I've, I'd grown up in Toowoomba, and it's a nice city. It mm. looks, um... We'd grown up in the same house. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, you grew up with me, bossing me around. Um, <laughs> we grew up in Toowoomba. It looks lovely. Mm. You don't really think there's any issues. You just do your life and go yeah. to church. But um, that weekend, um, five girls sitting around the table on the Saturday night just mm. talked about their sexual abuse of their life. Uh, we got to the fifth one. And We're talking schoolgirls here, aren't we? Schoolgirls, yeah. between the ages of 12 to 14. Mm. Um, and we got to the fifth girl and she just said, we need help. We've all been abused. Mm. Um, and I think that was just a penny dropping for yep. me. Yep. That we've got to help So they've been girls. abused by their boyfriends, by uh, family members. Usually family members, yeah. yeah whole men, range. Men, men in their lives, Men essentially. in their lives, yeah. yeah. Now, I was going to mention too, City Women is, is very unique. Um, we'll, we'll come back to the girls issue in a second, but um, it's important to make this point. You were you know, working as a pastor in a traditional church, but City Women transcends just one church. Um, what, why is that important? Yeah, well, we have a saying, it takes a citywide church to win a citywide battle. Um, and back 20 years ago when we started, there was a great network of pastors mm. that were really friends and mm. had a passion to reach the city. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I just captured that heart and thought, well, let's get the women in on this. Mm. And uh, I found that women get together a lot faster than men. Yep. <laughs> and also they already feel the pain of the community and they want to do something. And yep. quite often church doesn't always allow for that. Yep. Um, you might have your women's ministries and little ways you can volunteer, but actually getting into the brothel, mm. you know, working alongside the brokenness, mm. um, that was a whole new thing. Yeah. Okay, so let's come. So you, you went then um, from... Uh, running programs in schools to try and address the issues that these girls on the camp were telling about, about the abuse, the self-esteem issues that they had and essentially a lot of that was the Hillsong Shine program and, and other programs. Mm. But you, you mentioned the brothel and the sex workers. Um, mm. Tell us about that. Well, um, you'll remember about 11 mm. years ago our state government, Anna Bly's government, decided our city needed a brothel. Yes, 20 years ago I fought that legislation when <laughs> Peter... Right, yes. No, listen to me. So it's your fault. I'm used that, to being um, ignored. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, they wanted to bring one to Toowoomba. Mm. Um, we, we protested, we lobbied our 
local uh, members. Kerry Shine, let's name Kerry names. Kerry Shine, yep. yes. Mm. Um, he was not interested. He was yeah. happy to open the door to the abuse of women I in our city. I remember well. Yeah, I, I tried to get him to stop it 20 years ago. But, yes. Uh, yeah. So, um, look, the next thing we did, I, mm. I formed a group of women who just wanted to go in and love on these women. Mm. And, of course, we're not against the women. We're not against people at all. But yeah. what it does to our society, we don't like. So the last 11 years, we've had a group. So, so I, I heard you give an excellent talk the other night actually to the Liberal National Party mm -hmm. Women's Group on International Women's Day or, or for International Women's Day. And, and you said that, and I, I remember this of course, but for our, our viewers' sake, you protested uh, the brothel, so you had uh, big protests outside Kerry's office, but once the law changed and there was nothing more to be done, or sorry, once the brothel came to the city, I should say, mm -hmm. And, and the government refused to do anything to stop it, that's when you started taking the teams in to, to help the women who were in that in so-called industry. Yep, exactly. That's um, That was always... And, and how's that been received? I mean... Uh, what? Amazing. <laughs> amazing. Um, you know, they like to say that brothels are safe, that the women love like being there. We're told the lie. They've chosen to be there. Yep. They want to be there. Um, they're happy. Uh, the truth is there's problems galore. Um, what sort of problems? I mean, because when I challenged Peter Beatty on this and, and um, Kerry Shine. They said, no, we're going to make it safe. Um, this will be a wonderful place for women to work. They'll have health checks. They'll be looked after. They won't be abused. The crime will be taken out of it, etc., etc. So we're going to have this, you know, nirvana of, of brothels. No, so. um, they will be on drugs. Um, they told us they were going to get the drugs out of it. That, that's what they <laughs> told me. Look, and I know one manager who wouldn't take women on drugs, but I know other managers that did. <laughs> prostitutes who were on drugs in there. Um, one of our brothel managers refused to show porn in the waiting room because the men were violent, um, she had particularly one ethnicity of type of men. Uh, the police wouldn't turn up to help her, so I had to get a meeting with her and the police to, wow. to talk about why we're not helping these. Yeah. So, I mean, the fact that they've got to have a panic button in a brothel room yeah. in case she's in danger, yeah. I mean, that yeah. tells you something sure alarming. Is. So we've helped, we've helped women. I mean, one woman, for instance, was sent by her partner to um, pay off their debts. She didn't want to be there, so we were able to pay off so, her debts. So a man sent her to get extra work in one of these beautiful legal brothels that the government organised for them mm. to, to help the financial situation. What a That's disgrace. It. Yeah, so look, I mean, so many stories, yeah. um, but our team's just been fantastic at building relationship. Uh, we don't pressure anyone. If they hit, we're here if you want help, but yeah. many have contacted us. And, and you're still doing it today. This yes. is this has gone yeah. on for many, many Last years. Last Friday night, our team was in there. Now they're in the strip club, mm. which um, we have in our city as well. And, and you've helped some women to exit mm -hmm. uh, this uh, terrible industry. Yeah, we have. We've helped them get job training, mm. job licenses, um, whatever they want. We've yeah. helped. We've taken them to the zoo, um, done yeah. excursions, baby showers, um, baby showers for those yeah. who have become pregnant. Yeah. So yeah, a whole range of things. That's amazing, Tish. Well, we look forward to the day when the government doesn't sanction this sort of activity. Um, one thing that you said the other night when I was listening to your talk that really disturbed me, um, you discovered through the relationships you have with these women that uh, the way these legal brothels work is they actually shift women around the country. It's, it's almost like we've got a, a legalised form of sex trafficking going on. Look, for this, again, it's funny when it's such meant to be such a great, safe place mm. for security reasons. Yes, um, they, they go around... Um, the brothels, I think if they get too well known here or stuff happens, mm. which it always does, um, so yeah. yes, there's quite a large turnover. Yeah, well, that's 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 terrible. Well, let, let's switch to um, some of the other things that you're doing, Tish. Um, of late, you've been spending some time uh, in the nation of Fiji, and some of that has come off the basis of work you've been doing in Toowoomba about uh, declaring the city a porn-free city. Let's just start with that campaign and tell us about how Toowoomba got this reputation uh, for this aspiration uh, to be pornography free. Mm, it really came out of my work with the girls and hearing all their stories of abuse and realising just how much porn fuels um, sexual harassment, rape, especially you know if you've got a brother who's 15, 16 in the house he's going to act out on uh, his sister. So I became aware of that, became aware of the link between porn and domestic violence and yep. uh, our city has a great group uh, working mm. against domestic violence but they weren't mentioning this so yep. um, I just felt like it was time to really um, bring this to the table and our mayor got on board mm. um, really quickly with it. It's just a great guy. He's been courageous Paul Antonio, hasn't Very he? Very courageous and he's received a lot of 
um, what a flack, but at the same time he said he'll have women uh, in his staff come into his office and share the, the issues uh, in their relationships and the impact of porn mm. on their marriage. And So um, mm. so quietly people have even come to him and quietly. said thank you for, for this. You get a lot of abuse publicly, yeah. but quietly yeah. people it, come. It made world headlines, didn't it? Uh, when, <laughs> yeah. It sure did. Um, it sure did. And so... Yeah, we've just wanted to, I guess we're wanting to make porn antisocial. Yeah. Um, at the moment, we know we can't ban it, um, mm. but just like our, this, our government's done with smoking, yep. how do we make porn antisocial? How do we help people understand that if they're going to watch yep. it, this is what it's going to do to you? Yeah, it, it has an effect. It's not harmless, as we're told. Um, I was interested in one of your meetings uh, last year. You had um, someone from the domestic violence shelter in Toowoomba there. Um, and she was quoting um, not only her own experience but that of um, I think the Gold Coast as well and, and the people who work on the front line with women on domestic violence are saying that they can see there is uh, an influence of pornography feeding into the violence that women have. Now, now the academics will deny that, they'll, they'll say well there might be correlation but not causation which is you know sophistry uh, but um, you know and the porn industry won't allow any discussion around um, any causation but that's not what the domestic violence people are telling us. Eh? No. I mean the fact that 88% of pornography is violence yeah. tell, it's not only fueling domestic violence it is violence yeah. um, you know. And well, well pe look again you know and I've had my <laughs> dealings with the porn industry over time and you know, Fiona Patton who's now in the Victorian Parliament they would say look you know non-violent erotica is what they promote um, the porn industry so they would say what's wrong with that and, and um, I think you know that's nonsense uh, because we know this is feeding into a, a violent um, area. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and they never they never try and stop you know things like Pornhub or anything like that. They're apologists for this industry where there is obviously violence and rape online. People are making money. It's a hundred and fifty yeah. billion dollar industry, yeah. um, and so people are making money and. Yeah. So tell us about Fiji then. You've spent a fair bit of time there of late, and um, give people the, the backstory of, of how that came about through your childhood. Well, when we were young, uh, Mum and Dad took me and our two younger siblings. You stayed behind. They, they left me behind, but anyway, <laughs> yes, I missed you, that big experience. Or? You were um, old enough, but we went and lived in Fiji. Um, our parents were helping start a factory, over, a mm. garment factory mm. over there. Mm. Um, so they put me in an all-girls Fijian school, the most prestigious girls' school in the nation, um, where only Fijian girls are meant to go and be trained to lead the nation. I didn't, so I these, are, these are the daughters of the captains of industry, military, that sort of thing? Mostly. A lot of chief's daughters. Um, oh, look, you know, um, other people get led in as well, and obviously, mm. somehow, they let this white girl in. Mm. Um, and it was a great year, built... Um, Fijians are beautiful people. Mm. You make friends fast. Yep. I kind of, we left after one year. Uh, I spent a lot of time writing letters to friends, but mm. then that faded out. And then Facebook arrived, and we all reconnected. Wow! And they started seeing what I was doing. Mm. And so last year, one of them called and said, "Can you just come over here mm. and speak?" And mm. we've got big issues, uh, mm. huge domestic violence issues. Yep. Yeah. Well, tell yeah. us about. Uh, we've got a picture of one of your friends from your yes. school days. Yes. Yes. Uh, the, the viewers see that beautiful Fijian woman. Yes. Uh, tell us who that this woman is. That is the Honourable Linda Tambuya. She's um, a member of Parliament now in the opposition party. Um, but uh, f yeah, we used to play hockey together. We were both at school. She was a few grades higher, but we were in the hockey team together. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we got to um, know each other. Yeah. And so, yeah, I've reconnected with her. And, and she, when I went over there, I mean, big domestic violence. And also, they rate fourth highest in the world for Googling porn. Yeah, that's extraordinary for a, a, a developing nation. They've latched onto our technology and the negative aspects of that uh, very quickly. And I mean, what, you know, they especially don't talk about it. Um, but, you know, obviously, porn, you don't have to go looking for porn, it comes looking for you. No one's talking about it. Uh, everyone's watching it. I mean, I've friend told me in her village they would have the men would have porn parties you know, instead of the football parties that come together and watch yeah. porn around their one television yeah so again you know um, wherever there's high domestic violence I know there's going to be high porn viewing uh, so, so Linda um, just to show people again a uh, great lady got up in the Fijian mm -hmm. Parliament just mm -hmm. a few weeks ago mm -hmm. and gave a very powerful speech you can see it on your Facebook on my blog it's it's there if people want to have a look at it um, yes. 
just tell us about that. Yes, so um, just through my conversations with her, um, really just helping her see the link and she's done a lot of research herself and when I was in Fiji in January, we launched Fiji Free From Porn, which was just a great event. Yep, um, it's the front page of the um, Fiji Times. Yes. A lot of media coverage. We've had a lot of media and obviously um, the good thing about Fiji being smaller, I mean Linda has 80,000 followers on her Facebook wow, page. Wow, that'll be so half the country. <laughs> well, and I mean the great thing is 70, I think no, 85% of Fiji is on Facebook and I think they're all related and interlinked. <laughs> so you put, we, we've yeah. made a little clip and uh, that, you know, um, went wild. So yeah. um, she did a brilliant speech just outlining mm. uh, the issues around rape and sexual yeah. harassment and violence. And, um, and, and now they're having a, a national conversation about is it possible to use technology to filter the internet? They are, yeah, look. Which is, mean, is difficult, but it's worth talking about. Unfortunately, politics gets involved because yeah. any, I mean, everyone knows that this is a problem, mm. but then the Minister for Women, who I've met and had good conversations with, and she would agree, but she's got to get up and do a speech saying yeah. what's wrong. But yeah. behind and, and toe the party line. And toe this the is party. the problem with politics. And you can't look, I mean, for the sake of the country, just work together yeah. for this. But, um, but at least there's a conversation going um, in a nation that's deeply conservative where these things are taboo. Mm -hmm. But uh, we need to keep this conversation going here in Australia where we have normalised this over decades. You've been doing some things in Toowoomba that um, that spark conversations uh, in, in, in the Times Square section of Toowoomba. Yep. Yeah, no, I mean, one of our, with our campaign, um, is just putting up some billboards, something like Porn Fuels Sexual Harassment. We have our website um, and it's... So these are big electronic billboards? Big electronic the, billboards yeah. that rotate. It's not quite like Times Square in New York, but it's Toowoomba's <laughs> version of Toowoomba's it. Toowoomba's um, version. Uh, and then we post it to social media and mm. get a lot of interaction. Um, and you, and you've crowdfunded to pay for these so yeah, quite quickly. Yeah, so we've got a... You, you're welcome for my donation yes, too, Yes, gave $2.50. <laughs> um, a bit more. I'm just but a poor blogger. But we're we're going to put up some yeah. more in a few weeks. Mm. And um, so I just stuck up a crowdfunding in three yeah. days, got $2,500. So, um, so people want to have this conversation. They want to push back. Yeah, people are coming to you with their stories all the time. Oh. I see you put something on... Facebook this afternoon um, with some resources because of the, the parents and uh, Look, those I, coming to I you. mean, the parents are the ones who, who are really struggling because, I mean, social media is yeah. changing, there's new apps, there's predators behind every app, um, and parents just don't know how to handle it, and, yeah. you know, it's still the awkward conversation, do yeah. your kids want to talk about it, but um, mm. you just have to. <laughs> so what do you say to people, and, and I noticed some of these Liberal National Party women the other night were very impacted by your talk, but said, how do you stop this? It's, it's impossible because of the internet and the dark web and, and all of these sort of things. Yeah, I mean, it is. it does feel impossible and overwhelming. And I think at the moment, at least, we're beginning to try and have a conversation. Yeah. I think it's vital that city leaders do speak yeah. out about it. So young people, I mean, I've spoken to so many men in their 20s and 30s who struggled and no one said a thing. So yeah. you struggle in silence. Yeah. Um, but now um, they're beginning to go get help. The conversations are happening. It's less shameful. Yeah. Uh, I met with a great school principal yesterday at uh, one of our local public schools. So our principals yeah. all meet together every term. And they've had mm. me speak there and they're going to have me again. Wow. They want to continue to... Um, this is the state and the private the schools. The state and the private. And because wow. they see the impact of porn in, in the yeah. schools. So I suggested to her, can we do a billboard that says um, the principals of Toowoomba say no to porn? Um, and she was keen. She just had to ask everyone else. Um, wow, that'd be awesome. It that'd would be great. Yeah. And and I think, again, that's just, you know, saying this is not okay yeah. Yeah. to a young generation that yeah. see nothing wrong with it. Watch Fiona Patton and the sex trade go nuts over that. Uh, but, but that's good. These apologists uh, for this terrible industry, you know, Fiona being in the Victorian Parliament and heading up the Eros Foundation for many years, um, that they have been the people who have driven this idea that this is okay. So we've got to get leaders stigmatising it as you said earlier and saying it's not okay. Fiona needs to come and hang out with some real life yeah. young people. I mean I had a 15 year old girl in my car the other day who said not a day goes by when a boy doesn't send me a picture yeah. of his yeah. private parts. Thanks very much Fiona, you, yeah. you've normalised that. Absolutely. You and Robbie Swan, good on you. Um, Tish, uh, it's not just the, the porn fight and that's really important but um, I was also impacted by the work you've been doing with um, refugees and um, Yazidis who have uh, come to Toowoomba in disproportionate mm. numbers are uh, finding safe haven there. Mm. Tell us about that. Yeah, these are a people group. It's a religion, Yazidis. Mm. They're from Iraq mm. mostly, Syria. 